Guys, thanks so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Keep those questions and suggestions coming. I get to them as soon as I possibly can. Now, I know I'm running a day late on this, but there is a really good reason. We have new firmware for the Tone Master Pro, and it is available right now. Now, you should be getting the email shortly if you haven't received it already. Otherwise, I'll see if I can put a link in the description for this video. Now, let's go over the release notes because there is a lot of information here. New in this release, amp model update. British 800, new cab model, 4x12 British Blackback, new preset, Brit 800 rig, foot switch link groups, the switch link groups A through D, bypasses other foot switches in a group when any pedal in the group is selected, switchless bypass, expression auto on, initialize parameter control with expression heel or toe, user IR level control, MIDI through and merge now available options in I.O. settings. Preset MIDI now available in preset settings. Allows additions of up to five custom MIDI PC and CC messages to any preset, which are triggered on preset load. Tone Master Pro now responds to MIDI CCs for amp control and master volume. MIDI CCs also now working for various looper commands. Foot switches now have a dim option. Fixed in this release, improved experience when reordering presets via long drag and drop on the Tone Master Pro and in Pro Control. Cloud Reverb High Damp Control Improvement. All Tone Master Pro cab IRs are now properly phase aligned. Selecting mic for cab no longer returns screen to cab selection instead of cab edit. Foot switch LED now continues to illuminate after saving a preset in songs mode. Mythic Drive font now matches between hardware and pro control. EVH green, blue, and red channel model improvements. 4x12 Mega V30 cab model no longer uses more DSP pool resources than other cab models. Fixed gain issue when loading orange box or recalling preset having the orange box model in it. Improvements in switchless bypass operation and consistency. Bypassing Maximus Drive with boost enabled no longer causes pop. Old Fender accounts can now use the cloud. Fixed a UI reboot issue with switchless bypass when an expression pedal is assigned to control a splitter parameter within a split signal path type. Okay, first off guys, let's take a look at my original Billy Gibbons preset. Go into foot switch mode. Now as you can see, there's a foot switch for each of the scenes and right now none of them are lit up. If I press one, I have to turn it off, otherwise if I press this one, and press this one, and press this one, and press this one, it gets to be a mess. Okay, now we'll take a look at my updated version of this preset. Now on the surface, it looks exactly the same, but let's go to foot switch mode. First new feature. You might notice that the foot switches are all lit up, but they do look different, right? Well, I'm using the new dim option for the inactive state on my foot switches. Let me press one of the foot switches, and you can see how bright the foot switch is in active mode. Now, second new feature. Watch what happens when I choose a different foot switch. Instead of staying on, the first foot switch goes dim. The same thing happens no matter which foot switch I press. That's because I'm also using the new switch link function in this preset. Switch Link lets you define up to four groups of foot switches per preset. And when you turn on one foot switch in a group, the other foot switches in that group are turned off. So now my Billy Gibbons preset is set up so that when you press one foot switch, none of the other foot switches are on. If you press a different foot switch, it turns off the prior foot switch. I'll have a video coming out shortly that goes over Switch Link in more detail. We also have a new factory preset number 68, Brit 800 rig. It's right after Walk That Way. It uses the updated Brit 800 amp head. It's also using SwitchLink to help create three scenes. Drive, Lead, and Lead 2. I've also made some test presets to highlight some of the updates. My first test preset, 
Brit 800 EXP PED V1.2 uses the updated British 800 along with the new 4x12 black pack cab mic'd with an SM57 pan left. I'm using another British 800 with the 4x12 GB cab mic'd with a condenser mic panned right. It's also using the wah block with the new switchless bypass option. This preset tests out a number of new or updated features. The updated British 800 amp head, the new 4x12 blackback cab, all of the cabs are now phase aligned, and switchless bypass for the expression pedal. Switchless bypass lets you set up your expression pedal to turn on when the pedal gets moved up or down. So now you can set up your wah block to use switchless bypass, and your wah will come on when you move the pedal. This opens up a lot of options for the guys who couldn't get a TMP-SP1 expression pedal. Now you can use a basic expression pedal that uses a TRS cable, and you'll be good to go. Let's see how this preset sounds. Okay, this is how this preset sounds when you just boot it up. Now just for the heck of it, let's turn on the royal tone. Let's turn on the stereo tape echo. And let's turn on the large hall reverb. Now you can see my foot pulled all the way back on the Wawa. Let's see what happens when I move it. My second test preset, IR and MIDI version 1.2, also uses the updated British 800 head along with an own hammer IR. This preset tests the new IR level option, plus it tests various MIDI functions. Now, I could have been super industrious and pulled together the various pieces of gear that I have that respond to MIDI and could have used them for testing, but I decided to use MIDI monitor because it's much easier and it shows you all of the MIDI info that gets sent. Now first I'll do a little demo of the IR function, and then I'll switch over to the Pro Control app and show you how the new MIDI functions work. Now I opened the IR block, and I don't know if you can see, but there's level, low cut, and high cut. Level is set to 50 right now, and this preset sounds like this. You can change level down. Or you can crank that level. But be careful, because it can get loud fast. Okay, now I'll go over to the Pro Control app and do the MIDI tests for you. Okay, folks, now I'm going to do the MIDI testing that I talked about. I've got the Pro Control window open on the right, and then over here on the left is MIDI Monitor. It'll basically give you all this information about when MIDI data comes into the system. I've got my ToneMaster Pro connected to my PreSonus audio interface via a MIDI cable. Right now I'm on a preset that has no MIDI information. But watch what happens when I change to my test preset. See all this MIDI data here? That was just from activating the preset. But like the old Ginsu Knife commercial said, wait, there's more. Let me clear this. You can also set up each foot switch in a preset to send up to five MIDI messages. Now the first foot switch in this preset, which is called MIDI Test 2, turns on the stereo tape echo and also sends out one MIDI message. You can also send out another MIDI message that resets the controller data when you turn this switch off. Let me show you what I mean. We got the one message there when I turned the switch on. And when we turned off the switch, we sent out a MIDI message that reset the controller. Now let me clear this data again. Now the second foot switch in this preset, which is called MIDI Test 3, sends out MIDI data on five different channels. Look at what happens in MIDI Monitor when I turn this foot switch on, and then again when I turn this foot switch off. All of these MIDI values get set up in the foot switch assignment section. We'll go over these MIDI functions in another video. 
My third test preset, Orange Boost Max version 1.2, is used to demo these updates. Cloud Reverb High Damp Control Improvement. Mythic Drive font now matches between hardware and pro control. Fixed gain issue when loading orange box or recalling preset having the orange box model in it. Bypassing a Maximus drive with boost enabled no longer causes pop. Fixed a UI reboot issue with switchless bypass when an expression pedal is assigned to control a splitter parameter within a split signal path type. Okay, let's check it out. This is what it sounds like now, just when you boot it up. Now right now I'm just bringing up the Mythic Drive just so we can compare it with the picture of the Mythic Drive on the Pro Control app. Now let's take a look at the Cloud Reverb and the High Damp Control. Okay, now let's check out the orange box. Turn it off. Let's load it in again. All right, now this one's going to be loud. Maximus Drive. And Boost. Now in this test, the expression pedal is going to be controlling level A and level B in the splitter box at the end of the chain, kind of like a volume pedal. And it's working as expected.
Now, I'd say that this is a pretty substantial update. I know it doesn't fix everything, but it covers an awful lot of ground. I have no doubt that the Fender devs are hard at work on other improvements and fixes, and I have no problems with this update in the least. But I do understand that there's folks that have been waiting to back up their presets to SD card or to have a mobile version of the Pro Control app. All I can say is, guys, I have no doubts that they're probably working on this stuff, but that it just isn't ready yet. Jason Stillwell from Fender had this to say about the SD card issue. We're working on it for a future update. We're already setting priorities and planning for the next three releases. Now, I have no doubt that these fixes will be coming around, but there's just no way to predict when they'll be coming around. But if Fender says that they're working on it, I'd say that it's off of the to-do list and it'll be here sooner rather than later. Again, this is all speculation on my part, but Jason did say that the November firmware update was a hot fix. So I'm guessing that we're not gonna be waiting six months for these fixes to show up. So hang tight and enjoy this firmware update. <laughs> I know that I am. Now I'll have all new content this Friday about the firmware update. You don't wanna miss that. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. All right guys, enjoy the new firmware and I'll be seeing you tomorrow.